Today we're going to start our unit on statistics. We're going to talk about several concepts such as shape, spread, and center. When we talk about the data in a set, it is called the distribution. And when we're studying these distributions of data, there are several characteristics we're going to analyze. First, we're going to talk about the shape of the graph. And this refers to what it looks like when it is graphed. We'll talk about things like symmetry and skew, and this will be discussed uh, later in the chapter. Secondly, we're going to talk about spread, and spread refers to how far apart are the values from each other. Um, are they all really close together, and we say that they're clustered, or are they very spread out? And if your data is very spread out, it means that some measures of center aren't as accurate. Next, we'll talk about our measures of center, and this refers to the middle of the distribution. Again, there are many ways to measure this. The shape and spread will be talked about later. Today we're going to focus on center. All right, measures of center. Many times people come to this class having heard the words mean, median, and mode before. So that makes today a relatively easy day. Our mean is our arithmetic average, and this is a very common um, unit of center. To find the mean, you are going to add up all scores and then divide by the number of data points. To find the median, we need to find the middle value. In order to find the middle data, a uh, middle value, we have to order the data first. Now, if we end up having an odd number of data points, for example, let's say we have the data set 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If we were to have this data set, then the middle number would be 3, and that would be my median. If I were to have an even number of data points, like let's say I had 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, in this case, the middle falls in between the 2 and the 3. So when the middle falls in between two numbers, then you average them together, and that gives you the median of the data. If we were to have a larger data set, let's say, for example, that we had 50 values, well, in this case, we might not want to have to count um, from the ends into the middle to find the center. So what we can do is we can take the total number of data and divide by 2. And if we get a whole number, then we need to average this number and the one after it. So in this case, if I had 50 data values, then I would average the 25th and the 26th score. Now if I have an odd number of data points, let's say I had 51 values, then I would do 51 divided by 2, and I would get 25.5. And in this case, I would round up, and I would use the 26th value. You can always put them in order and then count in from the ends. However, when you have a large data set, it's helpful to not have to count all the way in from the, from the ends. Our last uh, measure of center is the mode. And the mode is not really um, a very good measure of center because Oftentimes, the mode doesn't even tell you the center of the data. It's just the value that occurs the most often. It is possible for a data set to have more than one mode. It is also possible to have no mode. So if you, you can have more than one mode, and you can have no mode. Now let's say we had a data set such as 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4. In this case, my mode would be equal to 2. Even though the values of 1 and 3 also repeated, the 2 occurred the most. Our last measure of center is the range. And the range is simply found by taking the highest value minus the lowest value. And again, these, um, these don't have to be in order as long as you can find the highest and the lowest. In this data set, we are looking at data for the number of hours of sleep per night. Go ahead and pause the video and find the mean, median, mode, and range. After you're done calculating that, play the video. So after ordering the data, we can find that the middle number is 5, that mode is 1 because that value occurs the most, and after calculating the average, we get a 5. The range is 9. Now, question 5 says, for which of these statistics is it beneficial to order the data? And the data needs to be ordered to find the median, or the number that's in the middle. Next question asks if the mode is a good indicator of center. And the answer to this would be no, it isn't. If we look at our data set and we look at our mode, our mode is 1. 
And even though that value occurs the most, it has nothing to do with the center of the distribution. So the answer here would be no, the mode doesn't fall near the center of the distribution. For this next problem set, pause the video, calculate your answers, and then check before moving on. All right, so we see here our answers for problem set number two. If you're good, go on to the next page. In this problem set, we start seeing a lot of numerical values, so let's make sure we understand what our data is telling us. This table shows the number of home runs hit per year by Barry Bonds. The first um, row is my number of year, so that's just telling me in year 1986, 1987, and so on. The, uh, um, the home runs, looks like ours, but the home runs, that's my actual data that I am looking at here. So the first thing that I need to do is put all of my data in order. Once I have it all in order, then I can find my mean, median, um, and see how Barry Bonds did. So pause the video, order your data, and then calculate those numbers. A suggestion that I make as you're ordering your data so for example, I would look for the lowest number, which is 16, and I'll write that down, and then I'll just put a slash through it. You want to make sure that you don't cross it out so much that later you can't see what you were writing. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the numbers and then calculate 11 and 12. Pause the video and do the same on your own. Okay, I have all of my data listed in order, and I found our mean to be 35.438 and the median to be 34. Since there are 16 data points, I know that when I do 16 divided by 2, I get 8, and I will need to average the 8th and the 9th score. So if I look at my chart now that they're in order, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, this is my 8th, this is my 9th, and my median would occur right here at 34. Now in question 13, the problem says to remove the score of 73 from the total and recalculate the mean. The easiest way to do this is to use our previous answer we found in number 11, subtract 73, and then recalculate the mean by dividing by one less score. Our new mean, by doing this process, is going to be 32.933, and this new mean is significantly lower. Alright, now in question 14 we are asked to remove score 73 from the total and recalculate the median. Now in this case, if I cross the 73 off the end, all that this does is slightly shift our center over. Instead of having 16 scores, we are now going to have 15 scores. And as we talked about before, you take the number of scores divided by 2. In this case I get 7.5, which means I round up and take the 8th score. So if I go on my list, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, the new median is going to be 34. And in this case, the median is the same. Now in part 15, we talk about the difference between being resistant and non-resistant. Basically, if we look at our different scores, a resistant statistic is one that is not highly affected. And in this case, our median is a resistant statistic. It isn't affected by those highs and lows. You could have one really low score, one really high score, but the middle is still about the same. The mean is what we call a non-resistant statistic. It is easily affected by extreme high or low data values. So one way to get around this is to calculate what is called a trimmed mean. And in a trimmed mean, you remove a certain percentage of data points from the high and the low end of your distribution. It's kind of like if you took away someone's best score and someone's worst score and then figured out where they worked in the middle. And then once you've done that, we're going to recalculate the mean after these scores have been taken out. So in this problem, we want to calculate a 10% trimmed mean, which means we remove the lowest 10% and the highest 10%. Often people only remove 10% of a score's total, and that is wrong. 
we are actually removing 20% of the total, total data points in the problem. So if we calculate a 6.25% trimmed mean, we have to first figure out, well, what is 6.25 of 16? So 0 0.0625 times 16 gives us 1. So that means that we want to remove one score from the top and one score from the bottom. So basically take away our highest and our lowest score. And our highest score is going to be 73. Our lowest score is going to be 16. And then after we've done that, we are going to recalculate our mean. And we are going to recalculate this out of the 14 remaining scores. And after we do this, we will get 34.143. Thank you, and homework tonight is worksheet one.